First, uh, let me join with my colleagues today. It's been a long day, and thank each of you for your testimony before the, uh, the committee in a forthright way. It's all appreciated, and you can tell that on both sides of the aisle how meaningful your uh, personal testimonies about the tragedies in August of 21 were. Uh, and uh, to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle who are making sure that this is a bipartisan catastrophe, I believe that there have been mistakes made for 22 years uh, in a variety of ways as it relates to in any war we fight, particularly the war uh, fought in Afghanistan. Uh, but let's be clear. If we knew we were leaving at the beginning of the Biden administration based on the Trump administration, then where was the plan? Where was the plan to properly evacuate? And as my friend Mr. Crow knows, we had two briefings. Uh, one in April of 21 and one in July of 21 or June of 21 uh, in the House of Representatives, classified briefings, uh, bipartisan. And the veterans who fought in Afghanistan were the most skeptical of what we were listening to in the spring of 21 and early summer of 21, briefed by uh, the IC, the intelligence community, and, and the military about the plan because there was no evidence of a plan. So we may well not have had a choice but to leave, but how you leave is a choice. And it could have been done, in my view, in an extraordinarily more effective manner. And it was a failure, not of intelligence, but of, of uh, political and, uh, and leadership failure, in my view. And I agree with uh, the witness that have suggested that, uh, that this led and, and uh, contributed to uh, Putin's uh, calculus about what would come next. Since it is International Women's Day, uh, let me start with uh, my trip to Kabul in 2015 when I witnessed firsthand Afghanistan steps in a positive way then uh, for social progress with the help of the United States and without the brutal control of the Taliban. On that trip, I met a young woman, Naid Azhar, who was from Jalalabad, and uh, I took tea with her that afternoon, and she was a Fulbright scholar at the University of Arkansas, earning a master's degree in anthropology. And she wanted to be home in Afghanistan with her career as an independent researcher and writer. And uh, before what happened in 21, that just reminded me of what a future of a free Afghanistan might have looked like. And we abandon our allies and our innocent civilians like Naid to the Taliban. Uh, Colonel Mann, thanks for your testimony, and especially your focus on Afghan women. And I've seen firsthand that positive force that they were playing in Afghan civil society before our withdrawal. Um, how much process on the status of women has been undone under the Taliban regime? Thank you, Congressman. I, I feel pretty underqualified to address this in the sense that I believe hopefully where, where this will go. I mean, I'm going to try to address it, but I think in the future, hopefully we'll have uh, a range of women leaders on, on the, on the panels as well, addressing this, hopefully from Afghanistan as well, because I think there is so much that we need to dig into on this. Um, what I can tell you is what I'm hearing from leaders of the group sitting behind me right now that are very engaged uh, with at-risk Afghans in country, and of course, people that we've worked with in Task Force Pineapple. And what we have done is is to literally wind the clock back to a pre-9/11 draconian civil society in Afghanistan, where where women and girls are are relegated to not much more than property, if that. And and the the atrocities that are occurring at a humanitarian level right now against women and girls are. Um, unconscionable. And I can tell you in interviewing uh, Minister Hasina Safi, the, the Minister of Women's Affairs, when, um, when we were talking about that day when everything fell apart, you know, I'll paraphrase what she said was, you know, everyone in the West for years has talked about advancing women's rights in the world and advancing women's rights in Afghanistan. But on the day we needed it most, it was nowhere to be found. Thank you. And I agree completely. And I hope we do have a panel as we explore uh, the wrongs of this evacuation process, uh, uh, women. 
Uh, I appreciate your testimony. I'm proud to be with you. I want to thank all the groups that worked doing the job that the State Department should have done. We still have cases in my office unresolved. And when I visited uh, Quantico to meet SIVs, 6,000 people at Quantico, there were less than 100 that were SIVs. And we did not take care of the SIVs in this process. And I yield back.